Już kiedyś obiecywałem wam, że przyjadę do browarni, do takiej browarni, gdzie nie tylko sprzedaje się piwo, lokalne piwo, ale też gdzie produkuje się browary. I akurat browarnia Hourglass, którą widzicie za mną, ma do zaoferowania bardzo dużo. 16 piw produkują u siebie. Więcej na ten temat opowie nam właściciel, lens oraz e, osoby, które tworzą przepisy na te piwa. A, także chyba nie będę już więcej przenudzał. Wejdźmy do środka, zobaczmy jak wygląda Hourglass i przede wszystkim zobaczmy jak tworzy się piwo i spróbujmy tego piwa. members of, of uh, Arvas uh, Brewing and uh, I'll have just a, two simple questions for him to start with. Uh, first of all, Shane, tell me a little bit about this place because uh, I know it from Lance, the owner, sure. that you guys have a you know, interesting history about, about yeah, this. Yeah, it started with uh, two really good friends who were friends in high school and uh, it was a uh, home brewing gone awry. They really wanted to make it, they were very passionate about it and wanted to make a business out of it. Um, so they started that uh, with a very uh, small, humble beginnings with about nine bar stools and about a three barrel fermenter, which was very small uh, in the beginning. And, and we were there for about two years and, and got wonderful support from that. So the, the communities really rallied around us. So basically you guys started from the bottom, right? They started from the absolute bottom. They were home brewing at home five gallon batches at a time. Wow, and, and now and you're here, this place yes, is basically yeah. huge, you know, it looks, it looks Beautiful for him. Thank you, for, thank for you very much. Know. Yeah, Brett and Sky, the two owners, uh, have been friends for, for quite a long time and, and, and began homebrewing together and one day they said, hey, we, we could make a go at this and there weren't any uh, local breweries around in the county that we're in and uh, they were the first in Seminole County and so to them, to Brett, to Sky, cheers. Cheers, yeah. And, okay, so we are here and you guys basically Yes, we manufacture, uh, we, we are up to 17 of our own beers right now here in the back of the house. Uh, the tap room's right out front. Shane, uh, let's not waste more time. Just <laughs> guide us through and tell sure. us how to make a beer. Absolutely, Just absolutely. The quick version, right? Yeah. Quick version, one sure. version. I don't, yeah. I don't have any idea how to make a beer. Sure. And lots of people who actually drink beer, they yeah. know something, you know, but mm -hmm. they don't know how to make a beer. They're actually like micro -brewery. Like, like this on this one. level, yeah. So I'm, I'm listening to, sure. to, to you and I'll, I'll follow you. Well, the brew day usually begins over here. Um, right there, the uh, water tank in the very back is a reverse osmosis. Uh, we purify all of our water that we use in our brewing. brewing. We strip it of everything. Um, and we take about a few hundred pounds of grain, <coughs> close to a thousand, and it comes right in here into the mash tub. With uh, very specific grains, very specific amount of water, and a very specific temperature of that water bring all the sugars out of the grains. Um, and it makes uh, kind of a dark colored uh, sugar water. That then gets transferred over here to the boil kettle. Um, here's where we boil for about two hours. Um, kind of evaporates down, gets the uh, strength of the beer a little stronger. And this is where you would add the hops in that top hole. Thing. So usually in that last hour, you do uh, hop additions and that's what gives the beer the bitterness. Without that, it would taste very sugary, very light in water. Um, so we brew, uh, or excuse me, we boil here for about two hours. Then after that's done, uh, we transfer over to one of these five fermenters here. So first step takes basically with one day. Um, it's all done in one day, but everything I just explained to you right now takes about four to five hours. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. So it's, um, we essentially leave the grain and the water in here for about an hour, and then we boil for two hours, and there's time in between. That's the uh, brains of the operation. From there, we can plug in the very specific uh, time, temperature. How expensive it is to, to, to get equipment like this? <laughs> We're talking about, uh, I guess, hundreds of thousands. Yes, of yes. Uh, Lance would be the uh, appropriate one to ask for yeah. that. He's one of our uh, financial owners. Um, and he uh, invests a 
invested quite a lot into the into the new facility. Um, it wasn't cheap. <laughs> oh, I bet it wasn't cheap. Look at that. So then we go. Yeah. The so we transfer over from where it's boiling the uh, the beer or wort, as we call it, before it's fermented, the sugar water or wort, uh, sitting right about 200 degrees. And in the transfer, it goes through a chiller and drops down to about 68 degrees. So it's right at about 68 degrees before it goes into one of these, uh, what we call fermenters. Yes, yes. Um, they usually stay at about 68 degrees when we add the yeast. Um, the yeast is very happy at 68 degrees. It consumes all the sugar in the water and creates alcohol. Um, that's what you can see is going on right here. You said this one is already done, right? This one is already done and it's begun to crash cool. That way we can drop it all, um, drop all the sediment and yeast out and uh, get a nice clear looking beer. And that, this one is still fermenting. So as you can see here, that was brewed on the 8th of this month. This is a Belgian dark strong. And uh, what you see going on here, these are sanitizer buckets with a blow off tube. So uh, the yeast that we pitch into these fermenters consumes the sugar in the water and creates ethyl alcohol, which is in the beer, the alcohol and CO2, that's a byproduct. So that comes out and bubbles up here. And it takes about two weeks to... Roughly, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Close to two weeks. Uh, some beers, this beer will probably take closer to three. And after those two, three weeks, we... We, we crash cool for another cool day, or, or for another few days, and then it's transferred over here to this last tank. This is what we call a uh, right tank, or a right beer tank. Um, this here, again, it's crash cool and it's carbonated. So we will hook up CO2, and all the beer will be carbonated in about 24 hours. Then from this vessel, this is where we came from. Then you can drink. Yeah, exactly. And basically, from this vessel, uh, how many gallons of beer you can have? How many? Our uh, system is a 10-barrel system, uh, which yields close to, if not more than 300 gallons of beer. Um, exactly how many kegs? I'm not sure. We fill kegs in different sizes. We fill big ones. We fill smaller ones. So. And I know that uh, you can not only drink beer in a, in a bar, but you can also buy the plants. You told me about That's correct, yes. Yeah. So, so you can basically buy a uh, keg. Yeah, absolutely. You can buy yourself uh, five gallons of, of our beer and take yeah. it home and tap it and drink it there. Yeah. What's, the, what's, the, what's the average price of, of getting a keg like this? Um, kegs like this, usually a good rule of thumb, if the beer is $5, if you see it on our staff for $5, Usually about $125, mm -hmm. which is a little high, but you're getting nice quality craft beer. This is not Bud Light you're talking about here. This yeah, is, this is really nice stuff. I mean, my viewers know what we're talking sure, about. Sure, sure. Uh, you guys asked for this, so this is it, and um, and people people like to pay for it for you. Absolutely, product. absolutely. Especially if you can have it. I say, hey, have it at your house. Right. Usually, typically higher in alcohol as well. Five gallons. I mean, I'm from Poland, you know, so <laughs> That's a few it days. Will, it will, yeah, five hours. <laughs> Shane, uh, thank you for explaining me how to, basically how to produce a beer. Absolutely. And uh, maybe I can try some. Absolutely, let's go have a beer. Cheers. Let's go have a beer. Jedno piwo dla swojej żony, bo jak dobrze wiemy, mikrobrowady też muszą produkować dobre produkty dla kobiet, których, które też, jak wiemy, piwo lubią bardzo. To piwo nazywa się, moja droga, Put the Lime in Coconut, czyli w szal, czyli mąkę w kokos, więc spróbuj to piwo Spróbujmy i... Spróbujmy za to. Ja generalnie lubię jako kobieta piwa z nutką owocową. To piwo, jakby miała porównać, czuć aromat kokosa, limonki i smakuje troszkę jak pina kolada i zdecydowanie poleciło mi to piwo dla kobiet. No właśnie Lans, właściciel jest tego miejsca, naprawdę. powiedział mi, że to jest bestseller wśród piw, które, które kupują kobiety w tym miejscu i właśnie no, tak jak podobnie jak ty. Znaczy nie wszystkie kobiety lubią piwa owocowe, ale no, no, ty wiem, że lubisz bardzo... Znaczy na pewno nie jest to piwo słodkie, jest bardziej kwiaskowe. Ale świetnie czuć aromat owoców, jest bardzo dobrze wyciągnięty i bardzo dobrze podkreślony, zdecydowanie. No, my to mówimy jako amatorzy piwa oczywiście, bo tak, tak ani, ani, ani 
jedna i drugiej odpowiedzi nie ma jakiegoś większego pojęcia, tylko właściwie testujemy. Natomiast tak jak powiedziałem, właśnie to jest właściciel Hourglass powiedział, że to jest jedno z najlepiej sprzedających się piw w środkowy, także a, ty się delektuj, a ja lecę e, po piwa dla mnie, bo ja mam przed sobą 16 piw, które będę za chwilę w tym miejscu testował, także ty się delektuj, a ja wracam do pracy. So these are 64 ounce hourglass growlers. They are to-go vessels where you can uh, take any of our beers that are on draft here in the tap room. You can take them home with you. Um, 64 ounce growlers are now legal here in Florida. They were illegal until July 1st. Uh, we label it with the name and the alcohol percentage. And, uh, any beer that's on draft, you can take home, take a little bit with you. Shane, one question. Uh, how how many bottles, how many kegs you can actually buy, you know, by the law sure, and, yeah. uh, and take home? Is, have, is, is there any limit for that? Uh, no, uh, we have 64 ounce growlers available, which is the common size throughout the United States, which is a to about four pints or half a gallon. We also sell, the, uh, we will fill full gallon growlers, or you can take home a keg, obviously, five gallons. Um, and then we have a smaller size, 32 ounces, which is uh, half of one of these. It's about two pints. What if I wanted to buy a full size keg and take it home? Um, we actually don't fill the uh, half barrel kegs, so you would have to go to somewhere else to get that. But uh, we do fill the five gallon kegs. You have already met uh, Shane, and we are back in uh, our glass, and now we'll be, we'll be tasting beer. Before we start, Shane, uh, anyone who can who, who visits brewery can buy a flight like this. Yeah, mm -hmm. can have five beers yes. just to try samples and choose one for you. It's How much then? Uh, it's five five ounce pours for ten dollars, and it's a great way to get acquainted with what we have on draft and what's new. Because lots of people they don't know that they can go to brewery and actually get a flight right. or ask you for sample. Absolutely, certainly. We're, we're, we're definitely happy when people come in and, and are curious about new things. And, and I would much rather people sample something up front and, uh, instead of just picking off of a name or something like that. Before we start, I will, I will take a bottle of water and close to me. Yeah. Because you advised me that uh, when you sample so many beers, it's good to have a sip of water in between and some juice yes, yes, with yes. salt. Why is that? Yeah, um, it just cleanses the palate. Um, it's tough. We try and order the beers so that we don't have anything that will really harm the palate up front. Uh, the hoppy, dark, uh, sour, or spicy. Mm -hmm. uh, those we try and keep to the lid. But when you're trying um, as many beers as this, 15 beers, you want something to cleanse the palate so you're tasting each beer as if it's the first time. Yeah, and uh, we have 15. I'm sure it was 16. Uh, 16, 16 actually, uh, yeah, your flights are 5. And all those, just wanted to say once again, loud and clear, all those beers, you guys... That's exactly right. They are all brewed here on House Brewers of Tomorrow. Yeah, they are yeah. our beers. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. 16 beers. Uh, we'll start with the first one. Sure. Let me grab it. Mm -hmm. What is it? This is, uh, this is Jimmy Crack. This is one of our starter beers. Um, it's an introductory beer for people who don't often drink uh, craft beer. It's very light. It's actually brewed with about 50% uh, uh, flaked maize or corn, uh, which gives it a nice creamy kind of corn finish. It tastes, it tastes just like a regular beer. Sure, exactly. Right. So, so I guess that you have some customers who just want something. Come in and ask for the yeah. Bud Light and that's usually uh, where we start with that. I didn't want to say that about that. Ah, well, <laughs> yeah. it has so, to be said. It has, it has to be said. So, so they can they can have the Sure, yeah, it's a great intro beer. <laughs> One more question. All those beers yeah. are in line and Lance, the owner of this place, uh, he told me that there is a reason why it sure. made it this way. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we keep the spicy, hoppy, uh, sometimes dark or sour beers towards the end because they will in fact change your palate. 
So if you were to try, say, our Texican Red, which is the very last one, very spicy, very smoky, if you were to try that first and then try everything else, it may in fact taste a little bit different. So advice uh, for people who never, never mm -hmm. went to very don't start with strangers. <laughs> sure, or ask your ask your bartender. We um, typically in a flight we will order them uh, so that you're starting out with the most uh, mellow or mild beers and finishing on the more experimental stuff. Yeah, unfortunately, not every place uh, has a uh, well educated stuff sure. like this one. Sure. But uh, but yeah, I, I would recommend the same thing. Just ask mm -hmm. your bartender for advice. Absolutely. For example. Absolutely. Let's start with the first one. Yeah, next here is the Zandeloper. Um, it means uh, hourglass in Belgian. Um, this is a Belgian blonde ale, so you'll notice a distinct uh, Belgian yeast character up front, uh, sort of like a uh, Lef, if you will, or other uh, prominent Belgian breweries. Very clean finish, very easy to drink. Yeah, I, I wanted to convert to Lef. Lef huh? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. It's very light. Uh, mm -hmm. What's the what's the uh, the alcohol on this is roughly between five and a half and six percent. Can't feel it. Yeah. What we got here? Next, we have our Seminole Trail. This is an American style pale ale. Um, it has a lot of hop flavor up front. Very hoppy. Yes, a lot of hop flavor up front. Not a lot of bitterness in those, um, but a nice clean finish as well. Um, this is another uh, good intro beer for those people who do like a little bit hoppier beers. Yeah, it's hoppy and very smooth. So sure. See, next we have here, uh, this is a metronome. This is one of our more recent beers to come out. This is a milk amber ale. It actually has lactose sugar in it. So you'll notice some amber ales tend to be a little drier, a little hoppier. This one's definitely on the sweeter side. Nice summer beer. I like this one. Yeah. One of my favorites as well. That one's gonna come in right at about uh, five and a half. Next here we have the, uh, the American Pie. Uh, this is a traditional American wheat ale, and you'll notice some pie spices on the back end. A little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of apple spice. Kind of got an interesting finish, huh? Yeah, you can even go with cinnamon. Yeah. And just so you know, I'm not a... I don't have the kind of knowledge you have so short times. I, I cannot even describe, describe mm -hmm. uh, what kind of... what, what, what I taste or... Right. So, it's, it's, it's good to go to a place like, like this so you can actually like, talk to the bartender. He can I love guide you through. It's uh, my favorite beer. part of my job is discussing beer and, and the education. Yeah. And I'm, I, lo I love drinking beer, sure. but I don't have this knowledge. Okay. So sometimes I, I, I don't know how to explain sure. what I like, what I want to sure. get. Yeah, so that's why we have yeah. samples. Questions are my favorite. But yeah, the American Pie, it's very nice wheat ale, uh, nice for summer. Um, it's got, again, it's good pie spices. A little experimental. Uh, this is the Ape Coat. It's an apricot pale ale. Um, as opposed to most apricot pale ales that you might find, or fruit beers that you might find overly sweet, this one's actually rather dry, almost bitter on the back end. You'll get a little bit of that apricot up front on the nose and on the palate as well. Make it pure, it's very fruity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Again, very summer beer. Uh, just came out. Yeah, this one definitely great for summer. Oh, yeah. Time for a uh, Chip and to cleanse and some water. Chips generously provided by Waka Taka, our good neighbors next door. Yeah, I wanted to um, talk about this. Um, you guys have a good relationship with uh, Waka Taka. We'll talk yeah. to Waka Taka in a few moments to, to have lunch there. Oh, okay. some stuff, yeah. Great. And uh, why is that? Uh, because Maybe you can explain uh, why you cannot sell food in. Sure. Um, once you get to the certain level of a brewery um, where you are distributing your own beer, um, your beer is going out to other local bars and taverns. Um, technically, legally, you're not allowed to make food on site, as far as I've been told. Um, so, Waco Taco has been a food truck who's been very loyal to us. They came to the old location. Um, and then in deciding when we said, hey, we're gonna move to a new location, they wanted to start their first brick and mortar uh, restaurant, if you will, and it's a match made in heaven. They don't do beer, we do beer, we don't do food, they do food. And they do so basically when you, when you, when people visit your, your, 
your place. Mm -hmm. uh, they can eat here. Yes, we encourage it. Um, you walk right over to Waco Taco, order off their big chalkboard menu, and they bring it right back to you in five minutes or less. That's, that's they're, they're quick, and uh, I think Paris better than Mexican food and uh, craft beer. Next up, we have the uh, Swift Half. This is a style called an extra special bitter. Now, despite the name, it's not very bitter at all. It's more of an English uh, pub style pale. So yeah, yeah, it's nice. It's an English uh, pale ale, if you will. Uh, again, one of our middle of the road beers, definitely very easy to drink. Um, Five percent or so. Yeah, I was about to say it's very light. Mm -hmm. It's the kind of beer you, yep. you can have once you can enjoy. Yeah. yeah. Definitely seasonal for the summer, hot Orlando summers. Well, Next up, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Next up is the uh, Fibonacci Farmhouse. It's a Saison, which um, is a Belgian French style ale. Um, usually a product of open fermentation. You'll notice a little bit of funkiness on that one. Um, good for those who like light beers but want a little something. 